and welcome back to minivan camper gal even though I no longer have a minivan <laughs> I'm Kelly and today I'm headed up on a trip to build out my van no not my van my SUV what should I call it I don't know but anyway I'm headed up to the mountains to build out my rig because where I live, it is so dang hot. You can't stay in the car for more than, oh, 10 minutes without burning up. So I've got everything with me and I'm headed up to the mountains after work on a Friday, hoping to get a little good spot at a campground. And I'm kind of excited. I've been like dreaming about like, oh, I could do this cabinet here and I could do this here, I could do this here. So uh, join me on my little trip. Well, my plan was that I was going to go to a little campsite, easy, paved road, and get a little spot. And everything is full. Oh my gosh, four campsites, or four campgrounds, and they're all full. So, I'm doing my least favorite thing, which is uh, driving on a rough road looking for a spot at dusk. But. Maybe I can find something. Wish me luck. But the Santa Fe does great on these roads. Okay, I found a spot. But it's up this really rough road. <laughs> The van would have never made it up here. Let's see if this will do it. It's pretty rough. Oh. <laughs> I think I've just got to get some momentum going. I'm spinning the tires, but she's going now. Oh dear. of spinning but she's making it oh not sure what happened there but let's try this way oh, come on girl I don't know if she's gonna make it. I just need some momentum. Go. Oh. Oh man, she made it. <laughs> Whew. That was a lot of spinning. There was no danger of me getting stuck. I don't think. <laughs> oh, this is gonna be great. Little camp ring. No fires right now. This is too dry. Um, but kind of a level space, sort of. All right, I found a spot. Sweet. Oh, it smells so good up here. Oh, and it's not 100 degrees. Let's see how bad I tore the road up here. <laughs> I'll show you what I came up. She didn't like it, but she made it. Yeah, so spun out there and spun out there. So I probably could have done better driving wise. I'm going to blame it on the driver because I think if I would have done that a little better. She probably just would have went right up. I haven't been in the mountains like almost all summer. Really at all. Maybe one trip to the mountains and that was it. Oh, I've missed it. Well, I got it up. A five-person tent is not meant to be put up 
by one person. <laughs> but persevere. <sighs> so this is going to give me much more flexibility. So here's what the inside of the SUV looks like. The inside of the Santa Fe. It's packed with stuff. I've got my batteries back there. Sleeping bag for tonight. Some cushions. And you'll never guess what this is for. It's my building material. <laughs> building out of cardboard? What in the world am I thinking? You have to stay tuned to find out. This is actually so much better than if I would have been in a little campground. Because people would have been like, what in the heck is she doing? <laughs> this does not look like your average camping trip. So my first order of business is to hook up my batteries so that I can plug my fridge in. <laughs> so that my food doesn't spoil. So everything's pretty much uh, the way it was in the van. But uh, I just have to kind of detangle things and um, make sure I don't do anything stupid. All right, I have power. Do you wanna see the craziness I'm looking at? Uh, so this is my power um, story right now. I have Starlink on the roof <laughs> uh, going through the window here and I have some cushions laid out but uh, it's kind of crazy to sleep like right next to all of this. Um, I was really hoping this would like squish up right into the corner there but uh, it doesn't because the floor is kind of sloped so um, these batteries are too big for the rig. Bottom line, they're too big. But it's so nice to have all this power because I can run a space heater, I can run Starlink, I can run my fridge, and when I'm out here working, um, I just don't have to worry about anything. Starlink can be up, and the solar panels are charging everything, and I can be out here for several days if I want. So it's really nice to have, but boy, they're big. <laughs> the space is a little smaller than I was imagining in my mind. And I was like planning everything out. This will go there and that'll go there. And then I get inside and I'm like, oh yeah. Um, it's like half the size that I was thinking. <laughs> so, but I have power, everything hooked up, everything uh, turned right back on. So that's great. Um, so yeah. Good morning. Today is the second full day I've been camping. Uh, I've been sleeping in my lovely tent, which is good because it's been raining. The forest is beautiful. Clear skies today because it's been raining the last, um, all day yesterday and when I got here it rained. And right now I'm gonna make some pancakes for breakfast. First I've got some chai tea. I normally just use my little rocket stove, but I forgot my lighter. <laughs> Oops. So good thing that this has a little um, igniter on it. So uh, I'm making some apple oat pancakes. Made these before. Yeah, it was really quite a nice day yesterday. I stayed in the car all day and it rained on and off all day. I have my Starlink on, so I listened to some comedy shows and just uh, sculpted out of cardboard all day. Uh, and it was nice. Although I have the Starlink um, coming out of my driver's side window right there. And boy, I've really got to get some rain guards because rain was coming in the window and I was frantically trying to put something in the window to stop it from coming in. And so that's in the Amazon shopping cart. And originally I wanted to make the design to sleep two people. Like somehow maybe like something, you know, you can take something out, but 
if you had to, you could, you know, if you're going to go on a trip with two people, you can modify it. But after looking more realistically, I don't think there's any way I can sleep two people and kind of do what I want. So I think I'm going to give that idea up. If I ever have a second person come with me, which is not that likely anyway, um, I'm just going to bring a tent and some cots and that sort of thing. So I've definitely had to like keep an open mind and uh, not be too attached to what I think I want in this. Like, okay, that's not gonna work. Like I have to, I have to move on. So um, I'm not sure my batteries are actually gonna work because they're so big. Uh, I'd really love to have them. I think they'll work where they, where they are, but I don't know, I might have to, Go back to the drawing board with that too. Maybe do a power station. I'm not sure yet. But you know, I wouldn't be here in this spot without the Santa Fe because my van would have not made it up that hill. And it was kind of validating because uh, I've seen three trucks, I think, try to make it up this hill and they're like spinning out a ton and like, and they didn't even go up as far as I did on the hill. So. It's like, oh, well, she does do pretty well on hills, even with a uh, questionable driving skill. <laughs> so I have my pancake mix here. I mixed it up before leaving. It's basically just um, rolled oats and baking powder and salt and some seasonings. Some like cinnamon and I have like a pumpkin pie spice mix. Oh no, did I put too much? You really can't put too much water when you uh, have a preset amount of flour. <laughs> a little bit of apple cider vinegar. And this is what's gonna make them rise. And a little bit of vanilla. In goes the apples. This is way too much apple for the recipe, but uh, I kind of like it. It's sort of like an apple fritter or more apple than pancake, but. And I'm gonna use the Ridge Monkey. I think this might be the only pan that's with me regularly because I can pretty much make everything in this. Um, everything that I make anyway. It really kind of suits my uh, style of cooking, my level of cooking ability. I like that you just put stuff in and like turn it and you know, that's pretty much it. <laughs> yeah, so instead of making a pancake and taking it out and making another pancake, I'm gonna just make like a cake. Okay. And she goes. Okay, so you ready to hear how I'm gonna turn my uh, cardboard castle into reality? <laughs> well, actually it started with me looking up, thinking about doing foam and fiberglass. So that's what I was thinking about initially, but I'm not crazy about buying a whole bunch of foam and cutting foam and like I'm trying to be more environmentally aware and, um, you know, buy less plastic. And I'm just not crazy about buying a whole bunch of foam and cutting it up and having a whole bunch of foam pieces that are going to stay in the world until the end of time. And so that got me on to what other type of material can I use besides foam? And I stumbled onto the channel called Ultimate Paper Mache. And there's a woman, her name is Johnny, and she's been making these videos for 15 years about everything paper mache um, standard paper mache she has a paper mache clay recipe that she made and she's a sculptor and so I got super excited about this idea what I'm gonna try is paper mache with um, tight bond 3 which is waterproof glue so I'm gonna lay Basically, I'm hoping this structure will be able to, I'll just be able to take it out like intact and it'll be all shaped and formed and molded. 
Um, and then I'm going to paper mache over the whole thing and maybe put in uh, some wood supports like on the countertops that are really, you know, I'd like to be able to hold weight on, have maybe some actual wood pieces that fit in and some slats and paper mache, glue those on and paper mache over those, um, add reinforcements where necessary and just do I don't know, as many layers as it takes to get it really sturdy. And then I'm going to go over it with a drywall joint compound, and that's going to smooth it out. And maybe use some of the clay that she makes, and maybe do some decoration. And uh, yeah, that's my idea. I kind of have some, um, oh, is this burning? See, I just get so distracted when I cook. Oh, that looks pretty good. Let's see. Well, I caught it just in time. See, how easy is this? I love this Ridge Monkey thing. The two halves come apart, so it even doubles as a frying pan if you want. And it has all the utensils in it. It's so like everything is contained in this little package. It's so cool. Anyway, where was I? I'm excited. I think it's going to be cool. I don't think anybody's done anything like this. I have images of like cob kitchens um, sort of saved in my pictures that I'm kind of getting inspiration from. So that's the plan. Um, so far, it's been pretty easy and cheap. Like, it's been really easy to just sort of sculpt with this cardboard. Like, you don't have to cut it exact. I just cut pieces and, like, put them in and tape them in. And, um, you know, you just need, like, kind of the outline to be right. But the space is just too tight to waste an inch of space. And I really just want to maximize the space as much as I can. See, there's my frying pan. I don't need another one. Ta-da! So maybe this will be lunch. some peanut butter. Oh yes. Mm. Oh, that's so good. Peanut butter, apples, maple syrup. Fantastic. What a great way to make pancakes. I don't think I'm ever going to make pancakes normally again. <laughs> well, now you know my crazy cardboard scheme. Let's see if it works. I'll keep you updated on my progress. So it looks pretty crazy. <laughs> but I'm starting to get excited. This piece here is going to be sort of the countertop that lifts up and exposes the sink and the stove. This is not the right piece. I had a piece perfectly cut out and then I accidentally cannibalized it. I was like, oh, here's a big piece that I can cut out. <laughs> Where'd my counter go? <laughs> All right, guys, thanks for joining me on my first camping trip with the Santa Fe. I'll see you on the next one.